what happened to the searchers. The Searchers, a 1959 skiffle band that was started in Liverpool by John McNally and Mike Pender, got their name from the John Ford Western, The Searchers. The band evolved from a previous skiffle ensemble that McNally and his mates Brian Dolan on guitar and Tony West founded in 1957. Mike Prendergast, a guitarist who lives next door to McNally, joined the group when the other two members lost interest. With his homemade bass, guitar, and amplifier, Tony Jackson, born July 16, 1938, was quickly brought on board as the lead singer after first taking a backseat to learning the bass. Joe Candy on drums played for the band which went by the name Tony and the Searchers. The lineup of McNally, Pender, Jackson, and Norman McGarry is typically considered the original foursome because Candy quickly left to be replaced by him. When McGarry's job at a bakery required him to work the night shift, he was forced to leave the group. Chris Crummy, who later adopted the name Chris Curtis, took McGarry's place in 1960. The lead singer was Billy Beck, who later went by Johnny Sandin. The group was frequently scheduled as Johnny Sandin and the Searchers at Liverpool's Iron Door Club. To join the Remo Four in February 1962, Sandin departed the band in late 1961. The trio eventually formed the quartet The Searchers, with Jackson taking up the lead vocals. They kept performing at venues throughout Liverpool including The Cavern, Iron Door, and others. They signed a deal with the Star Club in Hamburg's St. Pauli neighborhood for a 128-day run beginning in July 1962, with three one-hour performances each night. The sessions that resulted in a recording deal with Pi Records and Tony Hatch as producer were taped there. The band then resumed its residency at the Iron Door Club. In 1963, the band's debut single, Sweets For My Sweet, which featured Tony Jackson as the lead vocalist and was backed by Pender and Curtis, debuted at number one in the UK and solidified their position as a leading Mersey Beat act trailing only the Beatles and alongside Jerry and the Pacemakers. In August 1963, Jackson and Pender published their debut album, Meet the Searchers, which peaked at number 2 on the British album chart the following month. It peaked at number 22 on the Billboard 200 in June with a revised track list that included needles and pins. An agreement was struck with US-based Cap Records to distribute their records in the US after their debut single on Mercury and the second single on Liberty failed to find success in the US. The band performed the album's title song in the 1964 movie Saturday Night Out. Hatch contributed piano to certain recordings and secretly worked under the alias Fred Nightingale to write Sugar and Spice the band's UK number two hit single at the time. The song Love Potion Number no. 9 performed by Jackson was taken from the first LP and released in the US on Cap Records in 1965. The following two songs, Needles and Pins and Don't Throw Your Love Away, both of which peaked at number one on the UK charts, featured Chris Curtis on co-lead slash high harmony vocals and were produced by Mike Pender. On the Ed Sullivan Show and the NME Poll Winners Concert respectively, Pender and Jackson can be seen singing the lead vocal in close harmony as Curtis provides vocal backup. Tony Jackson, the bassist who has only permitted one co-lead vocal on the band's third album on She Know A Lot About Love, left the group after they achieved success with their single Needles and Pins and was replaced by Frank Allen from Cliff Bennett and the Rebel Rousers a friend of the searchers from Hamburg. Some fans had been unhappy about Jackson's unexpected departure, but Frank Allen's debut single with the group, a strong cover of Jackie D. Shannon's When You Walk in the Room, shot to number three in the UK, suggesting all was well for the revised lineup. Later UK chart hits included What Have They Done to the Rain, Goodbye My Love, and the folk-tinged Take Me for What, and they were all successful, and some of them were written by P.F. Sloan. In 1965 and 1966, He's Got No Love, When I Get Home, and ultimately Have You Ever Loved Someone all had minor UK chart success. 
The group's LP releases in 1963 and 1964 were rather rushed released, as evidenced by the hastily compiled Sugar and Spice LP that was published in 1963 and contained songs from earlier albums, as well as the second single. The subsequent Pie albums, It's the Searchers from 1964, Sounds Like Searchers, and Take Me For What I'm Worth from 1965 were better spaced. But in place of any subsequent new album, a budget Golden Guinea reissue of the second album and a compilation titled Smash Hits and Smash Hits Volume 2 were released on Pi's budget Marble Arch label in 1966 and 1967. Chris Curtis, who wanted to write songs, quit the group in April 1966 and John Blunt, who was influenced by Keith Moon, took his place. He was replaced by Billy Adamson in January 1970. In 1967, Curtis joined forces with guitarist Richie Blackmore and keyboardist John Lord to establish a new band called Roundabout. Curtis's involvement in the project was brief because the following year, Roundabout changed into Deep Purple. Despite a great band performance, Chris Curtis's selection of Bobby Darren's When I Get Home was a relative chart flop by their standards. This to some extent jeopardized Curtis's role as the band's song chooser and internal conflicts over musical philosophy and direction that had been noticeable before Tony Jackson's departure and probably contribute to Curtis's departure following the 1966 Australian tour re-emerged. Curtis had been the band's chief songwriter, song selection, and key high harmony voice in addition to serving as a figurehead and top public relations officer. Therefore, his departure was a big setback. The Searchers made an effort to adapt to changing musical trends by recording adaptations of songs by the Rolling Stones, Take It or Leave It, and the Hollies, Have You Ever Loved Somebody, which was a minor UK chart hit but likely cost both parties a bigger hit. They started writing the A-sides for their singles with the Curtis Pender song, He's Got No Love, which included a Stones-inspired guitar hook and continued with the Pender Allen song, Second Hand Dealer, the final Pi single, which was an observational song in the vein of Ray Davies. When their initial contract with Pi Records expired in 1967, the group was nonetheless released. They ended up on the British Chicken in a Basket touring circuit despite continuing to record for Liberty Records and RCA Records, even if they did have a little US hit with Desdemona in 1971. A contract with the UK division of RCA Victor led to the release of the hit recorded album Second Take in 1972. It was later republished on the low-cost RCA international label as Needles and Pins. Although they recorded new music, including covers of Neil Sedaka and the Bee Gees that were released as RCA singles with no marketing, much of their new material was not released at the time and RCA later dropped the group. The band kept on touring through the 1970s, performing both the expected classic favorites and more recent compositions, like a powerful lengthy live rendition of Neil Young's Southern Man. When Sire Records signed them to a multi-record deal in 1979, they received compensation. The Searchers and Play For Today, known as Love's Melodies Outside of the UK, are the two albums that were put out. However, with minimal radio airplay and scant promotion, they failed to chart. After its initial release, the first album had a fast makeover that included a few extra tracks. The removal of one song, a copy of Bob Dylan's Coming From The Heart, and a new jacket that may have just confused the general public. The records Will Birch and John Wick's sire single, Hearts In Her Eyes, which effectively updated their signature 12-string guitar and vocal harmony sound, had some radio broadcasts and with additional promotion, might have charted. The band started recording an album after signing with PRT Records, formerly Pi, in 1981. The single received little to no radio airplay like their Sire singles and was not carried by the majority of record stores. They promoted this with a UK television appearance on the Leo Sayer show, which was unusual for them at the time. Except for one, their remaining songs would be a part of 1992's 30th anniversary compilation. 
Following a farewell show in London in December 1985, Mike Pender quit the group to start a new one. He currently tours with Mike Pender Searchers, a group that was once a permanent ensemble but is now made up of musicians who are hired as needed. He performs songs by the Searchers as well as some of his own original compositions. After Pender left, McNally and Allen hired Spencer James, a former first-class vocalist, to take Pender's position. The Searchers were signed by Coconut Records in 1988, and the album Hungry Hearts was the result. While Eddie Roth took up for Adamson on the drums, the band continued to tour and was regarded as one of the most well-liked 60s bands in the UK concert scene at the time. Eddie Roth quit the Searchers in 2010 after getting engaged to singer Jane McDonald and Scott Ottaway took his place on February 26. On November 11, 2013, Billy Adamson, the group's drummer from 1970 to 1998, passed away in France at the age of 69. John McNally suffered a stroke in September of 2017 and took two months off from the band to recover. In 2018, the Searchers announced that the band would be retiring, and they ended their farewell tour on March 31, 2019. They did not rule out a possibility of a reunion tour, and it was announced on the band's website in 2021 that they would undertake a further farewell tour in 2023. And that's what happened to the Searchers. Thank you for watching and like and subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know, give me a fact about the searchers that I failed to mention on this video. And who should I do next on this channel? Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.